Coach, thanks for watching this video on my hybrid wing tee system. I'm Coach Rich Erdely. If you'd like more videos from my system, please click here or click the link in the description. Thank you very much. My name is Rich Erdely. I was the offensive coordinator at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh for 29 years, part of my 45 years in coaching. And I'm pleased to do these presentations for the Glazier Clinics. Today, I'm going to talk about the jet sweep in the hybrid wing tee offense. Why the jet series? Well, I started messing with the jet series in 1997. I was doing a clinic for the Glazier people in Cincinnati, and I was showing my trips passing package, flat motioning the backs all the time, motioning the trips. It was, it was run and shoot, a lot of run and shoot principle, back from the days when I was in, coaching in the USFL. Now, if, uh, Herschel Moore sends me a tape from a, take it from a bus, a top of a bus of this play with the back coming across and quarterback turn around handing him the ball. And I said, wow. This is it. it, got a chance. Now, why, why does it have a chance? Well, we didn't need to make a lot of blocks. You know, and when, you, when you're coaching up buck sweep, which I'm going to talk about later in another session, buck sweep, you've got to make six blocks to make it work. Here you had to make eh, maybe two and not great blocks, as long as you got in their way. And I think that's what the advantage of this thing is. So you get on the flank quick. I mean, the, the back is running full speed. And when you think about it, he's getting the hand off before anybody else is taking a step. Maybe they've taken a step or two, but he's running full speed. So he takes the hand off, boom, he's on the flank. It's the safest hand off you can make. So the quarterback reverse pivots. Quarterback reverse pivots. Hands in the ball right here. If I'm facing the other way, if I'm running a jet sweep to this flank, quarterback reverse pivots, boom. The ball is handed off right here. So it's the safest play we have. The quarterback doesn't even hardly move. So it's very simple, very safe. The timing is easy. Why? Because the quarterback can see him. He's not in any deep motion. He's coming right at the quarterback. So the quarterback sees where he is all the time. So the timing is easy. We had so many wing T companion plays that just fit. Belly, down, crisscross, trap, joker, sally, waggle, keep pass. And we've, we've run almost all of these at one time or another. I'm going to talk about some of them. You always have the threat of trips, bunch patterns, and rubs. Because why? You're bringing that, that motion back across, and they know that we've run trips, and we've had motion, we've had rubs, we've had... Uh, diagonals off of it, so they know that we have other things off of this play, other complements. So you always have that threat. What's a disadvantage? Well, it's tough to square cut or see a cutback lane because we told the back, you're thinking about hash, back, hash, hash mark, numbers, sideline. Get wide. Stretch the field. That's the biggest hole on the field. Stretch the field, especially if you run into the split end flank. Stretch the field, see the grass, turn up and run somewhere. So be a football player. But if the, there's, you, you, it's hard to plant and cut back if there's a cutback lane. It's very difficult. And hard to have a pitch man if you want to run some option off of it. Now, we have run some option off of it years ago, back, back in, the, in the 90s when we were still running some triple option. And we used everybody as a pitch man. We used the slot. We used the fullback. We've used everybody as a pitch man. But we never, we, we're not running that anymore. So I'm giving you what we're doing now. So this is jet sweep to the split end flank. So red formation, four back at the nine hole, jet sweep blocking. If it was tight end left, it would be blue 28 jet sweep to the split end side. So let's look at the rules. Tight end, the backside, zone, zone, zone. Center is going to reach on area. Left guard is going to pull and wall off. 
left tackle gap on area. Basically, you have the first person outside B gap. Now, we've always pulled this guard. And I've gone round and round with people. A lot of people just zone this play. We've always pulled the guard. And they said, well, you know, can he get in front of the jet back? Probably not. But usually he does. Because why? He's trying to block the safety. He's trying to find an alley player. So the uh, timing of it is important. But the jet back, we're telling him. Hash, numbers, sideline. Now, you're going to see my back's belly a little bit. Do I coach it up? No. I just told them, run fast. Now, do they belly? Yes. Why? I don't know. Because they're football players. They felt by bellying that gave them an opportunity to, to do a better job at the flank. So the, the important point is here is the quarterback. He must snap the ball when the jet back is in the backside B gap. He's going to reverse pivot 180. He's going to try to put his rear end in the play side A gap. My goal is to hand the ball off in the play side A gap. Do we get it done every time? No. Sometimes, most of the time we do, but that's the goal. The fullback is going to run trap left course. So he's going to take his left foot, dive it for the right foot of the center, and he's going to run a trap left course trying to intersect a linebacker, trying to intersect, uh, intersect the backside safety. Just get down and maybe somebody will tackle you. If you, they tackle you, good. So it's important for everyone to carry out their fakes. Now, when we first looked at this, the only two people that really have to make any kind of block are these two guys here. And the tackle is going to take a fire step, fire step at 45, and try to get his inside shoulder on that outside shoulder of the, of the five technique or a head up man on him. He, we are not worried about anybody inside the B gap because why? We're handing the ball off two yards. It's actually 2.2 yard, two and a half yards behind the line of scrimmage, maybe even a little bit deeper than that. And the, uh, uh, the jet back is getting it in the play side A gap. So we're not worried about these seven players over here. They're, I used to say they're no low contendre. They can't, they can't make a play. They might make a tackle 10 yards downfield. We'll take it. So we're not even worried about those guys. And, the, and they're take, our guys here are taking these fire steps to set up counters, to set up plays going back the other way. Now, people have asked, do you ever crack this? Because this safety is coming up so hard. Yes, as a matter of fact, I think in the first clip, you're going to see my, my split end crack him. Now, do we teach a push crack? Yes and no. We've done it. Usually, it'll be a called play. We've designed that play in practice. We're saying, okay, this week, the first time we run the play, I want you to crack because we think that they're going to be coming hard. And then we go from there to determine if we want to keep cracking or not. So that'll be a coaching decision, a coach's call. Otherwise, he blocks number one outside of B gap. He blocks number two. He blocks number three. And he pulls and tries to get number four. And that's the only people we're worried about. And I know a lot of people have, have done this a lot of other ways and invested a lot of time in this. We didn't, okay? I didn't want to mess with it. Because why? We were successful. So kind of the old philosophy, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So the rules, okay, quarterback reverse pivot, 18 inches over the midline. Okay, play side A gap, waggle at eight, go away. So the fullback, dive for the right foot of the center, run trap left course. And that's, that's as easy as we've done it. So against every defense, it's valid. You know, I really don't like running it against the 3-4 if they put this man up on the line. We've got other plays, but this is a tough block. Now, some of my kids were able to make that block. Again, I, you know, I had a couple of... Halfbacks, you know, 6'1", 200-pound guys that could make that block. Most could not. The 5'8", you know, 160-pound kid had trouble, especially when we were not allowed to low block them anymore. So again, this would not be a great play against this look. We'd probably check it and go the other way. 
So let's take a look at it and see what, see what, see what we look like here. As I said, this first play, we are going to crack because by film, we kind of missed the guy, but by film study, we knew they were going to be coming hard, so we did run it as crack. We offset the fullback here, and he gets his man. Again, I love the offset fullback. It gave us great advantage. Here we're going to run it without the offset fullback, and the, my right tackle and wing back do a terrific job. Okay, watch them fire step and get on their man and just run with them. Just run with them. Keep running with them. And let the back figure it out. Stretch it, stretch it, stretch it. But they do a wonderful job with that. Now, this is the flip play, lasso flip. This is jet sweep blocking. And the uh, quarterback is in the gun. We're in no back. And... You know, we started doing this my last three years because we had no backs. So we used, we used more wide outs. We, we were able to use three wide outs, or we could use two wide outs and just split our tight end out here, who was a very big athletic kid. Now, the flip play we got from West Virginia. And here would be my, my uh, thought. If there's, somebody's doing something that you want, Go to them and figure out, ask them how to do it. Because then you got a chance. Because they've made the mistakes, they've fixed it. So find out how to do it. Here, we're in the gun. The key is the snap count. We're going to snap it on set. The jet back takes off on red. So it's red set. Or it could be red set, depending on how quick that jet back is. We'd like to snap the ball when he is on the outside hip of the tackle because it takes 0.5 seconds for the shotgun snap to get back. And I'm going to talk in later sessions about the shotgun snap. I'm not going to talk about that right now, but I will talk about it in later sessions. The quarterback catches the ball and he flips it to the back in front of, in front of him. He's still trying to, to pitch it into the play side A gap. So he's going to catch the ball and pitch it forward. Now, He's got to catch it and pitch it. He can't tap it because that would be considered a fumble. If you catch it and pitch it and the pitch is incomplete, what do you got? Incomplete pass. Second and 10. We play again. So that's a, that's a key. And again, I see so many teams trying to run this play, but they catch it and they pitch it too soon. The, the, the back is catching the ball back here somewhere. Well, he's got to catch it at least by the center or beyond. Our goal is to catch it in the play side A gap. And then the quarterback waggles away. But do we change anything? No. So he's got number one on or off the line outside B gap. There's number one. There's number two. He's pulling, probably getting this backer scraping. He's blocking three. He's blocking four. So we're just counting our men. And, and, uh, Again, snap it on red set. Don't worry about putting anybody in motion. Everybody else remains the same. So, here's what the play looks like. Red set, boom. You'll see my spread in on the other side. What a wonderful job he does busting his tail across the field. Now here, this is a great team we're playing, Wabash. They're a terrific team. We catch it just a tad soon. But again, he stretches it, stretches it, and finds a place to turn it up. And, and uh, again, the first time I saw this play, West Virginia ran it in a bowl game, in an Orange Bowl. They scored three touchdowns on it, so we went down there and learned how to do it. But again, we don't, change, we don't change anybody's assignments. But we should, we should even snap it now. Look, they're still not lined up yet. We're snapping the ball already. And why is this? Because we were in an empty set. And they had some kind of a defensive call. And we played them. They were like number two in the country. This was a terrific team. So, you know, get up there, run the play. It's a first sound play. 
and it's, uh, it's been a great play for us. Now, this is the jet sweep off of the gun, offset fullback. Again, we don't change any assignments. So it's twins left gun, 600 formation because the wing is at the six hole, four back at the nine hole, jet sweep blocking. So this is the, uh, still the jet sweep. We haven't changed anything, and, and it's, uh, it's been a terrific play for us as well. Now, the quarterback is going to ride the ball carrier into the B-gap, and then he, we waggled him away. At many of our uh, camps, the quarterback is their best runner, so we would fake quarterback belly, and we put in a quarterback belly off of this. We ran it once or twice. My quarterback, we were running this, wasn't a great runner, and he was a great thrower. He threw for 6,000 yards and 50-some touchdowns in his career, so I really didn't want him running the ball that much. But uh, he's going to slide two steps, ride the ball carrier, and then waggle away. Ball carrier, your aim point is a foot in front of the quarterback. So... Uh, uh, the handoff is going to be a little bit deeper. Now, what that means to the left guard here, if this is an issue here, okay, and this is a, a, a wide two technique, we would probably combo this to that backer because that's probably who he might block anyway because why? You have the offset fullback to take care of the alley player. So here, if you didn't want to pull the guard, that would be fine with me. I think in my film you're going to see him pull both times. But if, you, if the, it becomes an issue, if that center feels he cannot reach him, he tells the guard help, so the guard knows the two of them are going to combo the nose to the backside backer. It could even occur here in the 4-4 defense. Probably would not occur in the 3-4 or the 3-3 uh, defense. We'd probably pull him every time there. We want to snap the ball again on set. So it's red, set. And you've got to just time it up to see where the back is. Red, set. Perfect timing. Very good. See him stretch it, stretch it, stretch it. Find a place and turn it up. Red, set. He rides him a little bit and he, he waggles away. And again, it's important for the quarterback to do this because somebody might stop and, and watch him. I tell them, maybe they think you're good. Maybe they don't know that you're not too good. But again, we have the offset fullback. I think we do pull the guard here, but we really don't have to. He doesn't block anybody anyway. Yeah, he got in somebody's way there. But uh, uh, there's jet sweep from shotgun. Now here we have ends jet sweep. Okay, so it's ends right. These are two ends. It could be your tight end and split end. You put two split ends in the game. This, this end here is your left tackle. He is ineligible. As I said earlier in my first talk, this is the only formation where we cover ineligible. And we do that because why? They see two eligible numbers out there. They're probably going to put three over two anyway. Okay, so we got what we want, and we're trying to run it back to the nub. Now, you can offset this fullback or not offset him. If you offset the fullback, he's a lead blocker. So you could say he ends right plus 28 jet sweep, and he would be over here. You could say he ends right minus. He could line up here and just fake guard trap from there. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a, something where you're just trying to confuse the defense. And again, none of the rules change. Okay? None of the rules change. So here, the left half, he's got number two outside of B gap. There's the B gap. He's got number one. He's got number two. He's going to reach here. He's going to reach and probably block him. So none of the rules change. We kept everything as simple as we could. So here we are in ends, we run it back to the nub. 
My guard gets a great block on the linebacker. My center does a wonderful job of reaching this wide three technique. He just gets a piece of him. That's all he's got to do. And there's the guard. And there's about a 20-yard gain. Okay, so that's, that's off of ends. Now, here's jet sweep to the tight end. We had several conversations because I saw another team, and, and I, was a, I'm a, I was a big uh, clinic guy, watching all the people at the Glacier Clinics when I wasn't speaking, and I went to every clinic I could go to other, otherwise. And uh, a lot of people here, they were, over, they were pulling this guard and blocking back with this center and running gut all the time on the back side. And we just chose not to do that. You know, and I, I brought it back to my coaches, and they said, Coach, why we, why we always try to change stuff? We're doing good with what we're doing. We're the ones who started this stuff. Why do you want to change? And I said, you're right. So here we have red 28 jet sweep to the tight end, and you see that I have decided to pull both of these guys. Okay, the tackle and the uh, guard. Well, we're always going to pull that play side guard. And what's the tackle's assignment? Block the first person on or off the line outside of B-gap. Well, there he is. Well, if your tackle can go right there and block him, that guy's no good. He stinks. Okay? He stinks. And you're going to win the game. But that guy's a Sam backer. He's a strong backer. That guy's a stud. So I tell my tackle, listen, you're not good enough to go from here to there and block that man. So we're going to tell him to pull and try to get outside and wall him off out there. When he does that, he'll just whisper to the guard, tag, tackle and guard pull, okay? So he'll just say tag to let this guard know that he's pulling. So we're just trying to try to get him all around the corner. And again, we're going to snap the ball when, where he's in the backside B gap. He's going to fake guard trap right. Quarterback is going to go away. So the tight end basically takes the place of the slot back here. He's got number two. This is the wing back has number three. And we're pulling the guard for number four. Now, in the 4-4 defense, I'm going to point something out here to you. And I'm going to give you a finute adjustment. And I hope none of you know what finute means. But it's somewhere between finite and minute. Coach Klausing used to tell me, Coach, you got all those fine new adjustments. Well, you need a fine new adjustment here. Because really here, we, the first time we ran this play against the 4-4, we pulled this tackle for this backer. Well, this backer started to slide a little bit on the jet, and he came right off the tackle's butt right there and made the play. So we realized then that we couldn't pull them both when there's a seven technique. So what we did, we comboed the seven to the backer. So now we got a great push, and we go to get them anyway. So we had a better push and a better play. So uh, it, it became a better, a better play for us. Now, there have only been a few times, and you're going to see some, somewhere here on my tape, I think on my goal line tape, where we didn't pull the guard because of one particular linebacker from a great team from, from Wittenberg, and he was an All-American, number 21, I can't remember his name, but boy, he was the best guy timing up a blitz I ever saw, and he was really fast. But every other time, we're going to pull that guard. So again, here we have jet to the tight end, and we offset the fullback. So this is blue plus. This is blue plus. 49, jet sweep. And you see, that the, the best play is when the quarterback almost misses the handoff because you know that back is really running. Now this is jet sweep. Same play, blue 28, without the offset fullback. But it's still the same play to the tight end. Now, here is tight end. This is red plus 28 jet sweep. So again, it's to the tight end.
with the full back offset. Now this is against a wing T team. They ran the jet stuff. But again, good timing of the snap, handed off in the play side A gap, and we ended up with a terrific play. I think this may have been the first play of the game, first time we had the ball. Okay, this is rip plus 28 jet sweep. We have the full back offset, and again, we're in rip formation, tight end wing left. Now we brought the left tackle over to be the outside tackle here on the right. Okay, so we have our three biggest guys right here. And again, this is usually a goal line, short yardage type of play. But nothing else changes. He's got number one on or off the line, so he's going to pull. He'll say tag. Okay, he's got number two. The wing has number three. Spread end has four. We're just trying to get as many people around the corner as we can. This is student body right. So if the guard feels he can't pull or the tackle feels he can't pull, that's fine. That's fine, because we do have enough people there to make it happen. Okay, so again, the rules have not changed. Everything has remained the same. So here is, here is RIP plus 28 jet sweep. Again, you see it here on the goal line. It's a goal line red zone play for us. We're just putting more people around the end at the corner of attack than you have. Now this may be where we did not pull the guard. I'm going to try to see here. Yep, we didn't pull the right guard because this backer here, number 21, terrific. So we don't pull that guard. He stays in and blocks the backer, and we still have enough people to get to the edge. Okay, now, this is Liz plus 28 jet sweep. So now Liz is the opposite of rip. So we have the tackles left, Split end left, wing here, tight end wing, to, excuse me, tight end wing to this flank, offset the fullback to that flank. Now this is a, this is a tough, a tough uh, formation for the defense to account for everybody. Because why? You have, you have trips receivers here. You have a bunch here. Okay, so this is a little bit of, of, a, of a quandary for the defense. So right here, they don't have enough people to support that flank. They have to do something, but they're confused because why? Because we have our strength here, especially if you put the strength into the boundary and you have that whole field to run to. So it, it's just, uh, again, it's just a little bit of a, of a quandary here for the, for the defense. Okay, the quarterback still doing the same. Reverse pivot over the midline. He's handing to the jet back in the play side A gap. He's waggling away. Okay, so, you know, we're, we're fire stepping everybody. And uh, uh, it's been a terrific play for us here. So they're going to be coming to the right. Carnegie Mellon is number two in the country in architecture. But we can't sort of get this down here where we can see the end zone from our camera. Okay, so now again, we've set the formation to the boundary. Now look at all those people in there that we could never run a play inside. We could never run a play inside. It just, it just would fail. There's just too many people there. But with the offset fullback, again, we have enough people to get to the edge. Let me show you, show, show you those two again, because this is such an important play to understand. But as long as you have that offset fullback, you have enough people. 
So if the, the guard did not pull, he probably felt nervous. That was fine. He knows we have enough people. Now here, if you look at all the folks they have inside, there's no way we can run a play in there. None. None. So you take it to the edge. And as I said, my premise of flank attack, jet sweep, buck sweep, belly slide. Those are our plays. But it all starts with the flank attack. Now, I hope you understand that jet is such a big play for us. And in the future sessions, I'm going to talk about jet counters, jet passes off the counters, complements to the jet, and pa other passes from the jet. So this is what we do. This is who we are. And again, it's under center. It's in the gun. And this really complements our offense. But uh, couple that with the belly slide and a buck sweep, and I think you're going to have a great package. I appreciate your attention, and I look forward to giving you the rest of our jet package. Thank you very much.